The Stark County Political Report is very pleased to have with us today two candidates for Stark County Commissioner. Uh, this uh, particular seat uh, is up for grabs, if you will, because the sitting commissioner, Pete Ferguson, elected not to run again. So today we have uh, Bill Smuckler, who's had a uh, career in government and politics in the city of Canton and uh, Richard Regula, who's had uh, been a former commissioner mm -hmm. and also uh, served uh, uh, the uh, township of Bethlehem, I think it was, yes, in sir. Navarre. And so today we are, are going to um, uh, have some questions for them and uh, uh, ask them to provide the voters of Stark County with reasons why voters would select either one of them to uh, fill this uh, vacancy that's uh, coming up uh, due to the uh, uh, Pete Ferguson not running again. Uh, first of all, uh, I've already um, listened to the uh, interview that both uh, candidates did with one Ponder on WHBC Points to Ponder, and uh, I'm going to use that as a framework for the questions we deal with uh, today. Uh, now, Richard uh, Regula, uh, you told uh, Mr. Ponder that the me reason you wanted to run for a county commissioner was that you really believe in Stark County. And to me, that connotes that you have ambitious plans for Stark County. Can you give us uh, some specifics of where that belief in Stark County is going to lead uh, you as uh, a commissioner of Stark County? Well, I believe in Stark County because as a former county commissioner, I, I've seen the good side of Stark County and I've seen the bad side of Stark County. And I tell you, one of the things I want to do, you mentioned Pete Ferguson, is give credit to the current board of, of uh, Pete Ferguson and Janet Creighton and, and Tom Burnaby. They've really righted the ship. The boards after I left in 2006 and Gail Jackson left in 2007 had some very difficult challenges. And I think they made some decisions that I, I did, definitely did not agree with. But when, uh, when Tom and Janet and, and Pete came in and, uh, and Alan Harold and Alex Sunbar put the whole in, uh, situation in the treasurer's office behind them, it's time for the county to move forward, and I think I can bring some things to the table with my background. And in the last six years, it's really been a godsend that I have worked in the healthcare arena because I know now how to manage large self-funded groups. Which the county, the biggest cost they have is their healthcare costs. It's roughly around fourteen million dollars a year, and I think I can help them through various. And I don't know if we'll have time to get into it, but for various dock on sites and things that they can do to manage their group to keep their health care costs down. I'm a believer in what ha is happening in the oil and gas industry. I've uh, done a lot of work, a lot of research within the industry. I think it's going to bring tremendous opportunities to this region. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of jobs. There's millions of dollars of investment that's already gone on. And that's why I say I do not care if you sell pizza or pipe, you're going to benefit from this this whole influx of the oil gas industry, specifically the Utica shale, because it's going to be here for a long time to come. My goal has always been, and I'm sure this is Bill's goal too, is to have our family have the opportunity and, and families in, within our region to have the opportunity for their kids to either get an education or get a trade and come back here and live in Stark County and raise their families. And I think Stark County is on the verge of a lot of good things because what do we have? We've got great schools, we've got great health care, well, our infrastructure needs some improvement, but with the job opportunities is starting to get a lot better. Uh, the Timkins are starting to grow and, and I think we're, we're really on the verge of some great things over the next not only 10, 20, and 30 years, but longer, and I just want to be a part of it. And uh, Bill Smuckler, uh, your um, uh, reason for running to run for Stark County Commissioner was you want to build bridges, not walls. Well, for years uh, I've discussed with the whole community uh, about the need for communities to work together. We did this with Jackson Township, the city of Canton, and in Jackson. Uh, we created a enterprise uh, CETA zone between uh, Green um, over to Whipple, uh, over to Stark State, and to the flower factory, 
which gave the opportunity for any new businesses to go in there. Canton would bring water, Canton would bring um, community development dollars, economic development dollars, and Jackson would bring day-to-day uh, -day city services to the table. This has created a working relationship with another community that up until two years ago never existed. We were all too worried about who was going to get the better deal or who, territorial and and it didn't work out to anybody's benefit. Heck, we haven't even been able to get together on 911. That's been one of the the biggest disappointments in this county because other counties can do it. So I want to make it that it is bridges, not walls. That we what we did in Canton with Jackson, we duplicate in other communities around the county. Uh, it's interesting that you should bring up that particular example because uh, I get around Stark County a lot. People share with me viewpoints of different political personalities and candidates for office. And one uh, individual, public official, said, well, you know, yes, Bill has all this experience uh, in trying to work out these consolidations and mergers and collaborative agreements. But what has he ever achieved with it? So this would be your answer to that criticism. Absolutely. This was an achievement. This passed through City Council, and I might add, this passed through City Council, um, a roaring majority that even the mayor could not veto. Uh, but you have had some difficulties in um, getting, for instance, the uh, mayor of Canton uh, to embrace uh, the rehab of 911 and other projects that you've been in favor of over the years. How do you think being a commissioner uh, will be different in terms of your ability to make some of these things happen? You know, building department mergers, health department mergers, and things uh, like that. Well, right now there is a health department request that uh, Mercy Medical Center and all Sisters of Charity. Sisters of Charity, I'm sorry. Sisters of Charity and Altman are working on trying to move two of the health departments together. So that's one thing, that's one positive thing. Obviously there's talk and some people have been working on building department mergers. But you know, above and beyond that, I think from a countywide placement with the help of SCOG these things have a better chance of taking place. This community, like it or not from state government, is being forced financially to do it. I mean, we've lost undivided local government funds, we've lost the estate tax, we are now being squeezed. And this isn't a question of whether you can raise taxes, this is a question of what do you cut? And I think people are now tired of the revenue side of things and are more telling their elected officials, you better find some ways to cut some things. Well, this doesn't cut services. What this cuts is du duplication of services. So I think that the time is absolutely critical at this point for to take advantage of what's going on with the state of Ohio to make sure that some of these things happen. Do uh, you differ from... Uh uh, Smuckler, uh, on no, the I think uh, in regards to the cuts that are coming from state government, it is going to force governments to, and I talk about smart growth, to start working together. Uh, I use this example over in uh, Alliance. Alliance in, in uh, Washington Township and Lexington Township came together with Louisville and, and worked on getting, with the Alliance Development Foundation, worked on getting that some of the funding to put together the uh, Beck, and, I think it's called the Beck Industrial Park that Chesapeake's going on to. We've got to break down the bar barriers in, in Stark County. And I think I'm from Bethlehem Township. I grew up in the Navarre Bethlehem Township area, but I've been involved in, in, around the county, whether it be in, in Lake Chamber Boards or whether it be on Mass on working in junior achievement projects and working on the Mass and Chamber Board and the Salvation Army. I know the county very well, and I know all the players in the county. And I think I can be, because one of the things I learned from my father is we've all got to work together. County politics isn't a partisan politics. We've got to break down the barriers between, as, as Bill and I both say, if we could get a lot of things done if we didn't have Friday night football because the barriers get set up because of that. And we've got to work together. And I've, I've seen it starting to happen. I've seen some things like I was uh, uh, when I was on the farm tour. The, the county engineer now is is uh, is using Enviroscapes to start doing some of their 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 
mowing of the roads and ditches. And, and you know, that's going to be because, uh, and I talked to Keith Bennett, the, our county engineer today, and I think they're going to have private sector people do more. Talked to Steve Meeks today. They're having problems with, and they've got a road and a, a parks levy on the ballot. He says they, they're talking about maybe using some private contractors who are out mowing the grass in the community to do the parks and do it on, under a cheaper basis and then it is when you have all the equipment and have all the, uh, all the uh, employees and even Randy Gonzalez said at Rotary the other day, uh, he said, you know, we bought a, a million dollar ladder truck, Plane bought a million dollar ladder truck and Canton bought a million dollar ladder truck, we probably only need one. And so we've got to get these departments, and I think the local government cuts uh, were very devastating, but the, one of the things it's going to do, it's going to make communities start thinking about, hey, can we work together? Can Bethlehem Township and Sugar Creek have one road grader instead of two? And, and sometimes these pieces of equipment rust out before they wear out. And, and I think you're going to, going to see that, and that's what's going to come out of this. And, and as the economy improves, I'm hopeful that we can work on a more, not only an inter-county regional basis, but on a multi-county regional basis. And one of the things I was very proud of is my service on, and Judge Reeder, when he set up the multi-county juvenile attention center down in, on Faircrest, which is a multi-county juvenile attention center, instead of each one having their, that was a great idea. The, even the solid waste district, which I'm proud of my service there, where you had three counties come together to form one solid waste district. Now, we didn't agree all the time, but that's, that was good. Now, when you were commissioner before, which I think was, what, from 2003 through 2006? So, yeah, 02 to 06. Yeah. yeah. Um, were you involved in any of these efforts during that term to bring uh, services together at the county level and influence the political subdivisions of the we, county? We tried. And 911 is a perfect example of us trying to, to get together. And they've made improvements, but it was always who was going to be in charge. Uh, we tried somewhat with the building departments to, to start bringing them together. And, and then you get into territorial things. And, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of times the, the issues in Canton were a challenge for the rest of the county because uh, especially the county and the city coming together to, 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 to provide joint services. And that's one of the things with my proposal for the health care for the employees on my dock on site plan. Let's have the county and the city have a joint dock on site together. And I've proposed it to them. I've, I've sat down with Linda McBride and uh, Carol Hahn from the county and said, we've got the synergy of all the, these county and city employees here. The concept has proven that it works. Let's come together and let's be a, a starting point because it's outside of the plan. It's just a, a joint, it would be a joint effort to work together. So there, there's, there's challenges, there, there's no getting around it. You know, from my perspective, sometimes from 1992 on, I felt like the lone voice in the wind. Uh, you know, I was hoping at some point in time some other elected officials would come to my aid and say, this really needs done, other than a few of the other council people who would continually vote with me. The, 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 the problem here is everybody knows it needs done. The question is, who takes the first step in the water? So would you say, because you probably are the Stark County public uh, official who has the longest track record in trying to do consolidations and mergers and shared services, that uh, that's a, a real strength of yours in this campaign? I think so, and I think I was willing to take on people from my own party who were dragging their feet, and I called them out in public for dragging their feet. And, and, and I don't think that was always to, to the, my best interest to be able to do that, but I thought it was for the people's best interest, and I wanted to be there for them. Well, people in your party, uh, you're the Democrat, and of course Richard's a Republican, uh, might not like Richard's idea of farming uh, county jobs out to the private sector. Uh, what, what's your, your uh, reaction to... That suggestion by Richard that the county needs to go in that direction. I think everything has to be evaluated. And for me to sit there and point and say, this needs to be farmed out, this needs, I can, can't tell you exactly. I have to talk to the other elected officials. You know, as Richard referred to with Keith Bennett, Keith Bennett stands for election himself. Right. And, and the engineer's office is, uh, 
you know, unto itself. And there isn't any county commissioner that can go down there and say, you're going to farm this out or you're going to keep oh, this no. in-house. And that's, and that's one of the things that's, that's, that's uh, um, we're in a position of leaving that up to other elected officials. Right. Well, one thing that I, I've noticed, and I've been covering Stark County commissioners probably for about three years now, every meeting, virtually, unless I'm on vacation or something of that nature. Uh, and what's come across to me is, and I don't think Stark Countyans really realize that, but the commissioners really don't have a whole lot of authority. So I discuss this two different ways. And, and Richard, you can stop me if you think I'm wrong anywhere. But there's two budgets down there. There's the budgets that get passed throughs, right? Because there's boards that determine what the policies are like DD. Yeah, like DD. Right. And there's there's a lot of that. Too. There is a tremendous amount of it, and there's this s small area of what the commissioners actually have control exactly. over as far as budgets go. Exactly. And I think no matter what form of government you're talking about, this has always been a public outcry. Why don't you take that money over there and move it over to the sheriff's department? Well, we can't. There's laws against that, and I'm not going to jail for you. You know, we used to hear the same cry in the city. Take that community development dollars and move it over to fund the day-to-day -day services in Canton. You can't do it. There's strings attached to a lot of the money that's down there. So wouldn't that be very frustrating to have a job? You know, you both want to be commissioner. <laughs> Wouldn't it well, be very frustrating to have a job? Of course, Richard, you've been there. Right. And, 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 uh, and not really be able to do it. But you're it, held accountable. It, right? and, it, and, it can, and it can be frustrating when you're trying to to work the budget to the best of your ability. Uh, you, when you're working with the courts, well, who, who can, by the way, court order their <laughs> budgets. That, but but I, one of the things I want to point out is... Uh, there's no partisan politics in county government, I do not believe. I always was able to work with Sheriff Swanson and Mike Rafis, God rest his soul. And, and I don't think roads, bridges, and ditches, they aren't partisan. This is to get the county and to get the county moving forward. So it's not a Republican-Democrat thing. My board, when I was there, Gail was a Democrat, Jane was a Republican. We never split a, a, across party lines. We tried to get, get things done. And, and that the only thing where I think the, the commissioners now can have an influence is that by saving money on health care costs, by investing the casino money, that, and of course no one knows exactly what that's going to be that's coming in, to, to work with the county engineer, get the jail back up to speed, but use some of that money because we've got a tremendous infrastructure problem that we've got to address. And we're going to get into that in a okay. little bit. Okay. Uh, so it's a frustrating job. Uh, probably the best thing you can do is to use the bully pulpit of being a county commissioner but to get some things done. I, I liken this to a city councilman's job or a trustee's job. That you are a county trustee or a county city councilman. And then it's just when I go out in public and say, what, is a, what does a county commissioner do? And I liken it to that because there's a lot of times, whether you're a trustee or in city government, you get federal dollars, you get state dollars, you have strings attached to those dollars too. And you make decisions based on that. Or what you try to do is you try to push and nudge and, and feel your way through of trying to get different agencies to go along with what people are asking for. But I think the other role of a county commissioner is to be out in the field, talking to the people, out working with the state legislators and the, and the federal officials, out working with one of the groups that we really need to have a long conversation with on the drainage is the Muskingum Watershed. I know John Hoopengardner. And, and get, be out there and also be out there attracting people to your area, talking to the, the oil and gas companies. And have, they can go to different areas and making your area attractive. I try to do it in my role in, in what I'm doing at the hospital is going out and going to Columbus and talking to these groups. And when they, they come in here to set up uh, and, and they're going to be here for a while to come, where are they going to want to live? They're going to want to live in not only Stark County but our region because of the great schools, the great infrastructure, or not, 
the, the great schools, the great health care, the educational opportunities that are going to be here. And that's, the, to get, and I, if I had to do over again, I would have been more active as a county commissioner out in working with uh, the businesses that are out there that are, you know, have choices. And one of the things I'm disappointed that when the commissioners had some to some budget challenges is when they cut the, the the economic development arm of the county is to start which, development. Which we're going to get into okay. too. And uh, so uh, you want a new opportunity to learn from your prior experience and you think that that experience is a selling card for uh, Richard Regula as the next county commissioner. I don't think it hurts. Okay. Uh, Bill, uh, I looked at one of your campaign flyers and uh, I, one statement that you made uh, on there that really caught my attention, and it uh, is as follows. I have a plan to get Stark County back to work and provide a brighter future for all our residents. And the word that jumped out at me was the word plan. So exactly what is the plan? Well, one of the things, and I don't believe that the gambling money, as I refer to it, should go to day-to-day -day city services. I think it ought to be used You're for... You're talking about the casino money? The casino money. Which, by the way, I understand for an entity like Stark County, is only going to be about 25% of the local government funding that was lost. Understand. Right now, it may not be perfect, but we are getting along on day-to-day -day city day-to-day -day county services um, in Star County with the, and not even the full realization of the sales tax, and the full realization should come up here very shortly. But we are getting along better with having gambling, uh, casino money, whatever you want to refer to it, coming in. But I think there ought to be two ways for this casino money to go. I think, number one, Stark County doesn't have a capital improvement budget. Right. Can't, I can't understand for the life of me why there's no capital improvement budget. So is that where you want to put the I want to put money? part of it there, and I want to put the rest of it back for economic development in this community. Okay. I want this to be for large items that are not day-to-day -day for the city, day-to-day -day so county thinking services. So you're not getting the money now. You've been cut. When the money starts coming in, then uh, you don't put it into the general fund, but you earmark it, uh, for instance, to uh, capital fund uh, or and your other idea there, too. Yes, so. absolutely. I mean, the buildings in the county are falling down, other than the building we're sitting in. But if you go to the Board of, Educa Board of, Education, Board of, Elections. Board of Elections, it's a pit. Right. And... We just had to take, what was it, $2 million to put into the federal building? $3 million to put into the federal building? You're talking about the uh, Frank Bow building? The Frank Bow building, oh, yeah. which is a one-time shot for the sale of the county farm. And there's not going to be any money to replace that. This money should go in for replacement of well, that Well, do you have any interest, uh, and uh, Richard, I want you to respond to mm -hmm. this too. Do you have any interest down the road... Uh, now that uh, County Commissioners uh, Creighton, Burnaby, and Ferguson have done, gone a long way to rebuilding the trust in county government, of uh, taking a, a look at another sales earmark sales tax for uh, items like you're talking about. Now? I want to reevaluate with the this is the the sales tax was only passed for a period of time, eight years. Right. I would never invoke anything without the voters. Right. So my discussion will be based solely on let's see, see how things go. You know, sales tax is also based on how the economy is going. If the economy gets better, the sales tax can go up. If the sales tax goes up, there's more money for day-to-day. -day okay, so you're saying services. you might not have to ask for it. Might not have to, depending right. on what goes on. But there is no set-aside, based on that sales tax, for any 
big ticket items in this case. To summarize your plan there, it's to generate the resources so you can do something. Absolutely. We have what I what I consider to be, and I know the phone's going to ring tomorrow as soon as you post this. But we let's put it this way. We don't do enough with economic development in this community. Let's give uh, Richard a chance to jump in here. Well, Your I think first of all, do you have a plan? Like Bill, Bill's got a plan. Absolutely. On the health care, I have, I have absolutely have a, have a plan that can, can show some potential major savings for the county. I'm a roads, bridges, and ditches guy. I understand that the county buildings need to be addressed, and, and we've, I remember doing things here with the um, HVC and, and all that kind of things. But I tell you what, for the guy that's out in in, in the township that has a drainage problem, or the, the guy that has an intersection problem, that's he's the taxpayer, and he's the one I think we should look at into first. I, in talking to Engineer Bennett today, there is a long list of, of drainage problems that need addressed. And drainage is a big issue and because it can do, I saw the damage that the flood in 03 did to Nimishillen Township and, and I've seen the damage that the Zimber Ditch can do and we did make some improvements. We didn't solve all the problems but we made some improvements. So, so your region. program is just to improve the infrastructure sure. in Stark County and to make it a more inviting environment for businesses to Absolutely. come and set it. And Do work, I have that right? And, and work with the Stark Development Board to have a uh, to work with attracting businesses into our area. On the sales tax, they doubled the sales tax. The sales tax, when I was a county commissioner, uh, in fact, I learned a lot. When I took office in 03, the sales tax failed the year I was elected. We worked together with all the elected officials to get a quarter percent sales tax passed. We lived within our means. We did projects by getting federal grants, by working with the sanitary engineer in, in, in some of the things with the, within the solid waste district. But we, we need to see, the, because I'm a firm believer that the economy is going to turn. I think it was in the paper today that the sales tax is up 10%. They're projecting it's up 10%. The investment income's up a, a, little, a little bit as the econ economy turns. Carroll County sales tax is up 35%. So you're going to see an increase in sales tax. This is going to right the ship for the criminal justice system, so that will free up some revenue for the uh, for the, the the county general fund. I mean, it's all in the general fund, but the <laughs> it, but to, to free up some things, it, and that's why my number one priority is putting money back into 4-H. 4-H may not seem big for a lot of people, but it's big. For, big for the, the agriculture community. I've seen the benefit of 4-H when they cut that $100,000. Now, to the commissioner's credit, they restored it to restored it to 50. But I have yet to seen a, see a kid who goes through the 4-H program that ends up at Maldi County Juvenile Attention Center. We spend, I think, I don't know, that four to four to four point so, five. So million. this is kind of a human infrastructure problem uh, approach, right? Well, and, it's and like I was with uh, the good boys quality and, citizens, right? The boys and girls club over in Maslin today, and, and and they're struggling for some front for some funding. But they've got a lot of program that get to the youth before it gets too far down the road, and they end up either in Armada County Juvenile Detention Center. And if you ask the sheriff, a, a kid that ends up there. Autumn ends up at the jail, and we spend a tremendous amount of resources at the county jail. Yeah. I'd just like to address one part of that. And, and uh, uh, you know, when Canton had flooding problems in the Nimishillen, and when Canton had flooding problems at 25th and Market, nobody came to their rescue. Canton fixed the problem. And I guess this is one point that we disagree. I don't want to sit here and hope and pray that federal dollars are going to show up one day and take care of the flooding in those other communities. Yeah, but for your approach to work, and I heard it uh, on your exchange with uh, Mr. Ponder, is uh, you're talking about North Canton taking care of its problems. I think it's not just and North Canton. I don't want to call North well, Canton or Plain out. I but think they that, have to all, I know that. But don't they all have to come together? And w this is one problem, really, that goes through each of their communities. And isn't this in line with your collaboration model, your working together model? It's called bridges, not walls. Right. And I spoke to Mayor Held, and I spoke to um, Louis Giavasis. And I, Louis said to me, if North Canton's willing to 
help fix these problems, he'll go talk to his township trustees about fixing these problems. And you're sticking by... We've got to do it on a regional basis. basis federal money. All you do, well, if, if available, but watershed, Muskegon watershed, watershed. money, uh, any sort of local matches that we can come up with, any sort of state matches we can come up with, because you can fix the problem here, and that exasperates the problem here. And that's why my argument to the, the West Kingdom watershed is what is what's their biggest issue right now is the dams. The dams in Beach City, the dams in Bolivar. And they've got to slow. We're at the top of the dam here. And we've got to slow that flow that's coming down. So you do want improvement here, and that speeds it up to get to here. And that causes more problems for, for those folks or these folks down here. So you've got to address it on a regional basis, not only inter-county, but multi-county regional basis. And that, I've, when I was a county commissioner and before that, when I was a township trustee, I served on NEFCO, which is, is the Northeast Ohio Four County Organization. Their main thing was water and water quality. And, and we've got to address those issues on a, on a, on a, on a collaborative effort. And that's if we go out, we disagree. Right, you're, we you're but if we go out, if we go out to the Zimber Ditch and talk to those people, because I... M Marty, I've knocked on almost 7,000 doors in this community. My first day out knocking doors was at the Zimber Ditch. And it was like I forgot where I was until I got to my first door. And I get to my first door, and it was like they had an elected official down here, so they're going to vent their frustration. Right. Well, these people have been promised this, promised that, promised this, promised that, and this has been going on for 20 years. And you're saying it's time for local officials to deliver? Way past time. I'm going to use his quote through Ellis Herb. I heard it. And that was a great quote. <laughs> you know, it's 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 too more much planning. more, <laughs> more digging less, and less planning. Yeah, and and that's you know what, and that's what we're down to now. And you know, we may disagree how the funds should get here. I'm just dis I'm just disagreeing. Yeah, it's not a difference of whether or not the problem should be solved. It's a matter of approach. That's the difference. And, and I and if you've ever and I've had this happen to me. I lived on Colonial Boulevard and sewage backed up into my basement, and it was a wreck room. Once you have that happen to you one time, and then the insurance company says, well, we don't cover that because you don't have a special rider. And those people down at the Zimbar Ditch can't even get a rider. But that being it as an example, what we did, we saw that on, you talk about sanitary issues and sewer backups and things like that. When we did that retention basin out, out on 12th Street, uh, that was a collaborative effort with the, the Stark Sanitary Sewer in the mass on sanitary sewer because they had to hold, start holding that water back. It's, we took a lot of grief on that project. I think, we, I think it was 521, and we built when we built that tank to, to slow the water down. But that's where what happens, once again, upstream is on me because what happened when all that water was flowing yeah, through? Yeah, well, that was my point to Bill and it, his more and then, local approach is that that could be a problem if you don't treat the total problem. If you go yeah. back and talk to the current county commissioners, They'll tell you it starts in green. Sure. Right. They will. That's why it's they a will. regional issue. Right. right. Well, but do you tell the people of the Zimbar Ditch, we'll get to you in another 20 years? I, 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 you know, and like I said, we just respectfully disagree. I can't sit there and do After you have this happen in your house one time, just right. one time, right. you sit there and you look at every elected official that comes your way and you sit there and say... You're not taking care of my needs. So your position is it may not be a total fix, but you have to fix what you can. Absolutely. Okay. And I'm. Uh, and you would like a more complete fix. Well, because if you if you don't do it that way, it's it's, it's still going to be a continue to be a problem. And, and one of the other things too, I learned. I learned a lot about ditches in my four years. Is people got to take some personal responsibility of not filling the ditch up with debris and trees. In, in yard clippings. When that flood happened in 2003, there was, Greentown lost a fire truck in, in I think it was, that's technically Lake Township. And when we went back and looked, the yard service or whomever was mowing the grass had plugged up the catch basin. And so that water came in so fast and it backed up. I was out on a ditch with Lee Laubacher in Perry Township. A, a fellow came up to me crying at the fair and said, my ditch backs up, I get sewer and this and that. We went out he had thrown tires, yard debris, and everything else in the ditch. And a lot of times that's the problem. If a tree falls 
call your brother-in-law or, or nephew and say, hey, you want some free firewood? And start, you know, working on it. We've got a tremendous amount of issues that need to be addressed with, with dredging. And, 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 you know, that's another one, Mark. It's when all of a sudden the, the guy shows up to start dredging, you get people go, whoa, wait, wait a minute, we saw that too. Well, now, let's move on to 911. Uh, a former commissioner had this grand plan to put, impose a sales tax, which I'm sure neither of you two would ever do. Lesson learned on that. Of course, it got repealed. But it did generate some money. And uh, I think Stark County has probably put, uh, or at least has reserved to put in, uh, about $2.5 million into uh, completing the fix of uh, 911, which the need for a fix started back in July of 2007 when SCOG, the Stark County Council on Governments, uh, commissioned a study by Geocom, who basically came back in February of 2008 and said 911 is, is broken in Stark County. Uh, so uh, it's uh, fallen on hard times because of the same issues that you've talked about already, the turfism in Stark County. What would each of you do, if elected, as Stark County commissioners, to break the logjam? You know, today I just talked to the commissioners. They just put out bids. They're going to be put out November 1st for the CAD system. And I said, well, the system, it's 911 is inching along. Can either <laughs> one of you bring anything uh, to the Office of County Commissioner to get it moving more than inches. Uh, <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go first. Yeah. First of all, I, I was going to say, I can add. Uh, first of all, let, let's start with this. Okay. And, and by the way, I think to the viewing public, you know, 911 is emergency call receiving and dispatch. That's how you get your fire, your police, and your ambulance. It's very vital uh, to start counties. Richard will tell you, and I think agree with me, that we still have pockets in this county that people cannot communicate from one end of the county to the other. This is a big county. The main bugaboo seems to be, what's this worth after 10 years? Because this is no different than a radio. The truth is, this isn't worth anything after 10 years. Anybody going to try to resell a radio, a cell phone, anything after 10 years, you can't get anything for it. The hang-up's always been, what are all these radio systems worth out here in the county? And everybody tells you, because no one has a brand new one, everybody has 800 megahertz, and it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years old, depending on what system you're in. None of their systems are worth much. There's a few people with new ones, but there, well, there are few and, and far and we between. Did through a yeah, but of, what, what are you well, going to do to And, move and this that's along. my point. Right now, there is a state bill to sort of bypass all the players in this thing and to move this along and make it happen because the state likes regionalization. And they're handing out money, not just for this, but for other aspects of having re regionalization. Mm -hmm. I had one. Is this the innovation had, fund? Is that what you're I'm not about? sure what they they're called. I know it's coming through the auditor's office, I believe, in a lot of instances. Yeah, local. Well, well there's, there's a local. Just, so there's the state auditor's there's office. There's a local. Okay, you think this is specific to right. 911? Well, so I think in a lot of instances. The 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 point I'm trying to make is I had lunch with Mayor Healy three weeks ago, and he admitted it's coming with or without him. That was his exact quote. With and I went over the phone aspect, and we went and had a more uh, civil discussion of what we really knew to, need to do to get 911. Um, you know, the, the analogy of 17 Friday night football games is not a bad analogy. We've taken this to the umpteenth degree of having it on every aspect of services in this community. But what we have to start sitting down, and this goes back to what I said with the state, there's no undivided local government funds coming. There's no estate tax coming. People are being pushed, shoved, kicking and screaming all the way in some instances, of being forced to 
do some of these things. So are you telling me you don't think that a commissioner is going to be that relevant to the process, that the state is going to force this issue, and so it's uh, really not a factor uh, that you have to concern yourself with? I think that, it, it, in my opinion, this is coming. This will probably take a vote of the commissioners. It will probably take a pass-through in some instances for the money that will be matched and readily available. But there are other aspects of this thing that are being pushed along. And I think that the commissioners will might have a difference between what system it is. But you think it's going to be a state? I thing. think it's finally going to take place. Richard? Well, I think it's, it, it has taken some baby steps. One of the things I was uh, happily to see was that the county dispatch and the sheriff's dis dispatch are actually in the same room. They used to be in the same building, but now they're <laughs> actually in the same room together. Uh, we did do some things with the 800 megahertz radio. We've ran into some barriers there where the guys would pick them up and, and, and just say, well, we, we're used to our low band or whichever band it was. But I think in, in that the state is going to force some of this because of the local government funds, because of the cost of the equipment, because of the lack of volunteers. You don't see as many volunteer fire departments anymore. They've got, and they're starting to break down the jurisdictional boundaries. It used to be, you went, if you got in an accident at 12th and Whipple, you, there was four different jurisdictions. They'd ask you which way you're pointing. And those things that, and I, I tell you, the two guys that I'll give a lot of credit to that, that have worked very hard is uh, uh, Ted Heck, and, and John Sabo. They, unfortunately, they both retired, but uh, those two chiefs saw the benefits of working together. And I think as the next generation of firefighters come up, they see the challenges and they, they know it's better to work together. We've made progress. We started to be able to identify where cell phones were, which back in 2004, 5, and 6 when I was there, that was still a challenge. And, so, and so, so do you see more of a commissioner factor than... Uh, I see. I, I, I see. Does? I see. Once again, the commissioners being the kind of the conduit to be out there within the community and in working with all the very various agencies, not representing the whole county, and in, in, in trying to get out. Get, you know, my goal was always to get just people in the same room together, and, and we've made some progress on that. And it, it's it's moving slowly, but I think ultimately the, the state the, and the fundings cuts are going to ultimately force a lot of these turf wars to come together in, in the duplication of equipment. And I was per, when I was a Bethlehem Township trustee, or no, when I was a Navarre Village Councilman, we bought a $250,000 pumper. When I was a Bethlehem Township trustee, we bought a $260,000 pumper. They are literally 200 yards away from each other. And you see it up in Lake Township with the multiple uh, police departments and fire departments and... I mean, you should be leading the charge on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on, to, uh, move on to an, uh, another issue, um, economic development. Richard, I've heard you uh, talk at length on uh, Ron Ponder's show about the oil and gas thing. Yep. And uh, it, it sounds to me like you think that's going to be the salvation of Stark County's economy. Uh, do you share that, um, Bill? Now, I think the salvation of Stark County's economy, and I mentioned it on the Ponder Show, um, is more along the lines of doing some things. Uh, I discussed in there with, about what Mark Dowd was doing downtown on expanding broadband throughout the state. He signed a contract with the state of Ohio to expand broadband all over the state. And, and you know, in some instances, when you're 57 years old like me, um, you've got to be taught by your kids what different things are. I learned what clouds were um, and what um, Ernie Blood's doing out on um, hills and dales. Um, clouds, I thought, were in the sky, but if you, if you talk to your kids, uh, they know Apple Computer, they know that they're saving and backing up, and we're becoming one of the hot areas for this. Uh, University Hospital is now backing up all their records in Canton, Ohio. And I think that the way to go about this is to do more on the tech basis for permanent jobs. You know, when, when, you, when you talk about fracking, there's two types of jobs. There's the, actually there's three types of jobs. There's the construction part, there's the 
we're going to put the wells in part, and the third part is who's left behind after all this is done. And who's left behind after all this is done is not as great as, as, as what's over here, too. So I think that we've got to take a different route. Okay, so this is your way of saying that oil and gas uh, fracking is just a temporary thing. I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I said that there will be permanent jobs left behind, Marty. Okay. But they will not equal the great amount of jobs with the startup. And I'm saying I'd like to see us go a different route with clouds and broadband and things that are hard for 50, 60, 70 year olds to understand. It's got to be more along the lines of, and, and this helps with another aspect. You know, um, we share something in common. We both have a child at Ohio University. And um, I don't know if my daughter's going to be back. But I've got two other daughters. One is doing an internship in Brooklyn, New York. And my third daughter is permanently in New York. I think the way to offer the opportunities for these kids leaving college is to do more with the tech end of things. And that's what I would like to see happen. Because right now, a lot of graduates, not all, are not coming back to Stark County. Because we we're not offering what these kids want. Are we going to get to where you want to go through the Stark Development Board? I think the Stark Development Board's got a... a, a I think that they offer um, a hope. I think that going back to what you talked about before of economic development do dollars, we've got to offer them more of a hope. You know, like I said, Mark Dow signed this contract with the state of Ohio. The clouds, Ernie Blood, he doesn't have any contract with anybody. He's running a for-profit business over there. Um, he just happened to be on the cutting edge of technology. Um, we need to help expand this further to offer other people. And no, no. Where are the funds coming from? Well, Ernie's taking it out of his. No, no, no. I'm just talking about from the county's, uh, you know, uh, Stark Development Fund. Funds. You lost. They, you lost it. I, st I talked about a lot of, and it may take a couple of years. The casino money as one right, aspect well, of that. Right. Well, go back to that. But uh, the Stark Development Board was in a month or so ago and was asking the commissioners for more money. One year, I don't think they got any. It's, I think it's 50, the plan is for 50000 this year. Maybe. But it, that is really... A drop not, in the bucket. Yeah, I was going to say. So, Richard, uh, how are we going to get more money from uh, the county job. coffers to the Stark Development Board? Well, first of all, I want to get back to the, the oil and gas. And, and we're talking about jobs. This isn't just about one, two, or three jobs. This is about engineering. Going to... High oil and gas website. There's 65 vocation that they're that they're looking for. My son is studying environmental science down at uh, Ohio University. There's going to be some opportunities when he graduates. Uh, uh, for his a classmate of his didn't want to go to school. He's a mechanic. He got his welder's license. He started at 22.50 an hour, and he's working 40. So you 50, think it's going to be more substantial than Bill does? Absolutely. And this is so the, that's you, a you, difference. You, you talk to. The, you talk to the people, the Utica play is not going to be the Marcellus, it's not going to be the Balkans. The Utica play is very rich in oil and wet gas. Ta happened to talk to a Dominion fellow today that was at, at all of bars equipment getting, getting a chainsaw. He said, we're converting all the lines from dry gas to wet gas. You go over to Marathon, talk to Marathon. They're gonna, they, they put racks in to handle 12,000 barrels a day. They, they want to go to 36,000 barrels a day. Chesapeake doesn't make the investment in Louisville if they're going to be here 5, 10, 15 years. This is a 20, 25, 30 year play. What made Stark County and this region great was our industrial backbone and in, in ability to make stuff. You talk to the pipe, the plumbers and the pipe fitters and talk to Barry Evans at the trade unions. They are out training people. They look at this as the greatest opportunity to hit this region in a long, long time to bring good so am I hearing you right that this is such a good thing that we don't really need to worry about the Stark Development Board and oh, pumping no. more no, no, money no. into no. that? No, no, we need, we need the Stark Development Board to continue to go out and attract uh, the, the, the larger companies like the Baker Hughes and like the Chesapeake 
to say, here's what's happening, here's what we have to offer, here's our housing, and here's our cost of living, and here's what we have to bring into this region. They need to have somebody that's going out and going to the trade shows and getting involved to attract and continue to attract people here. Okay. But I tell you what, there's a there's a, a lot of engineers that are in this in the building next door that have moved their operations here that have brought 10, 15, 20, 40, 30 jobs, and they're hiring local people. So those are engineering jobs. There's You talk to people in, you, in the local Ford dealership. Look and talk to the, uh, Brad Black at downtown Ford. They're selling cars. That ultimately spins off and helps people in Detroit. You hear a lot about cars in the, in the presidential okay. area. So, but do you agree that more money has to go to the Stark Development Board from the county? Yes, sir. And was it going to come from the casino money or where? Well, it's going to come from a combination, once again, of increased revenue in, in sales tax, hopefully some casino money. I, I mean, there's a finite... Uh, Ideally, uh, how much money would you like to put into Stark Development? Board? I think we fund... I'd have to look back, but I know we funded them at least a half million, if How not about million. you, Bill? Me? Yeah. Every, for, for jobs in this community, every last dollar we can find. Okay. Uh, one other question on uh, oil and gas and fracking. Yep. There is a very active environmental group in Stark County, Stark County Concerned Citizens. And they're going to be all over, either one of you, as commissioners, especially you, Richard, if you get elected because you're so bullish for oil and gas. Well, they're not. How are, you, how are both of you, you know, Bill, if you get elected, I think your track record is that you demonstrated that you really uh, are into the environmental side. Well, so it, how, are, how are both of you going to deal with this? Look, you talk about somebody that's got an environmental background. Yeah, you I, worked with I, the landfills. I worked with the landfills. We stopped landfills. I know the greatest thing we have in this region is a fresh, clean water supply. I've talked to health care providers across the country, everywhere from North Dakota to Texas. To, we've had people from Williamsport, PA, people from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, and these are just either elected officials or chamber people. I have yet to hear of one fracking incident. These guys are extremely safety conscious. Can mistakes happen? Mistakes can happen at a, um, a large manufacturing facility. So you but, just don't think there is much of a concern about that? Uh, you've always got to have concern. Anytime you're drilling into the earth, but my, but my larger concern is still landfills. And we've still got two of the largest landfills, and we've still got, and, and to their credit, uh, county More than fracking is, is uh, landfills. Because our water, I, I grew up on well water. I still am on well water. Our water table is pretty much 50 to 300 feet. And, and I, I, I know what can happen when, when they're mining or when they're, uh, uh, you know, like they're taking the sand and gravel out. That can have an impact on your water supply. I, I understand that. And we've got to be protective, and we've got to work with the regulatory authority. And one thing, you can say what you want about the legislature, but when they pass House Bill 165, it's some of, some of the strongest standards in the nation. But it also took away local control. That and and uh, uh, the but, uh, the uh, the House, well, the House Bill two seventy eight and Senate Bill one sixty five took away a lot of local control. Either one of you want to uh, try and convince the legislature to go back and give the local government more authority, Bill? Can I say something? Yeah, um, you know I'm, and I think I'm. I keep getting this represented here because. When you digress and, and talk about three different instances, sometimes things are taken out of context. The bulk of the jobs are always at the beginning. The, the second test is when we've quit drilling and then there's other. There will be a lot of jobs left here. For but the, it's not a cure-all, right? It's not a cure-all, and that's what I'm saying for the You county. think it really my, is? My concern, my concern for the health, those... Earthquakes didn't happen in Youngstown by accident. My concern is what we're putting into the ground. Canton's water, aqua water in Maslin. This is all affected. And they call it trade secrets. Well, I shouldn't believe that there should be trade secrets when we're pushing chemicals into the ground to bring the natural gas up. So our water supply, as you know, Marty, is basically an underground river. 
which is not that deep. And my concern is they took local control away. It's now the state to make the call. So the county commissioner's office doesn't have a say on who's going to be able to drill and who's not going to be able to drill. And, you know, this is like saying, well, you're, you're, what do you have to, do? And, and we get these calls all the time, I'll go knocking on it and say, well, how do you feel about abortion? I don't know, I'm not in the United States Supreme Court. You know, how do you feel, and Richard, you get the same kind of questions. How do you feel about fracking? I don't know, I'm not on the state legislature, or am I working for the state government? I have been and sworn in to oppose the laws of the land, and the laws of the land are we allow fracking. But my concern is, I want to know what's being pumped into the ground. And like I said, Youngstown didn't happen by accident. And if, if, there are accidents, yes, but if that water is forever injured, you can roll the sidewalks up here and roll it away. Because the greatest asset this community has is water. And that's my biggest concern. No water, no... Forget the town. There's no county. But as commissioner, I understand you don't have local control. It's been taken away from you. But will you be weighing in with the state of Ohio? I will be weighing in for transparency. I will be... I will be but I will also be weighing in that as long as we're allowed to have fracking, I want these guys to be able to work and to have the jobs that are generated with that. And I want it done on a local basis. I don't want people trucked in from Oklahoma and Tennessee. I'll be weighing in on that, Marty, too. I don't want them coming from some other community to work our community. We've got a great labor force here. Richard, will you be weighing in on the folks in Columbus? Uh, local control's gone? Well, and I think I'm, I'm in regard to 165, I think by having it under ODNR is where it should be, that they, they, have, they are the regulatory authority because these, you know, when you're building these large tracts of land to, to uh, drill underneath, that they should, they, they need to have one authority, and I believe in ODNR. Now, that being said, we do have some local control when it comes to Chesapeake. Our soil and water is doing all the, the, uh, the drainage out on, on the Chesapeake site. And, uh, and you know that gives us that local control. And uh, I think it, Engineer Bennett, Star County Engineer Bennett, a has worked out some agreements, roads, written agreements, road maintenance agreements uh, for road maintenance, and Absolutely. that's uh, important from a local standpoint. Absolutely, we've got to we've got to work with them, okay. and, and and we've got to protect the environment, and we've got to continue to be vigilant on what's going on with, with the landfills. And that's where you do have local control. The, the Solid Waste District is now back in control of the Solid Waste District. The, the EPA took it over for a while, and, and now it's back in control of the lo local authority. Now, hey, go ahead. Go, you go ahead. No, I'm just saying, but it, it's it's changed too. But we've, we've got to protect our environment. I agree with Bill, and, and I said it first. Our water supply is the greatest asset we have in this region. Okay, now we're to the point that I want each one of you to take a couple minutes and tell the voters of Stark County what you have in a unique sort of way to make them want to vote to put you in office as county commissioner, each one of you. Bill, we'll start with you. You know, I have been fortunate enough to have a family business in this community that my brother and my sister and myself own. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to send uh, three beautiful young ladies to uh, public schools. And one of them uh, ended up going to college in Mount Union, in Mount Union in Stark County. Um, I want to make this community better from the aspect of I don't want someone else's kids to not have an opportunity like my daughter didn't have an opportunity to come back here. I've helped create jobs in this community and I know what it takes to create jobs in this community. I also know what it's like to work with other people. I've worked with Tom Burnaby as law director at the city of Canton and you know you never know you can do the impossible to you work with someone who's actually gone out and beaten you in an election. And I worked with Mayor Creighton for two years when she was mayor. 
and I think we got along just fine. Um, I want to make this community better. So much so that I'm willing to leave Canton Hotel and Restaurant Supply to my brother and my sister and become a full-time county commissioner. Um, I can't hold a $76,000 a year job and hold it part-time. I want to be there for the voters of this community, and I have been. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I've gotten phone calls to go out in problems, and I've been there at 2 a.m. I've gotten phone calls to go out at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and I've been there at 2 p.m. And one of the other things that I do when I go and knock on these doors and talk to different people and go to events, I give them my cell phone number. I will be as close, and my home phone number, I will be as close as the people of this community want me to be. And I'm asking for their vote on November 6th for a full-time county commissioner that wants to work on their behalf no matter what time of day or night it is. Okay, now Richard, uh, in your uh, closing, please address the point that Bill brought up in terms of being a full or part-time uh, commissioner, because I understand and I heard on your interview with uh, Ron Ponder that you plan to keep your job at the Mercy Medical uh, Center. So would you uh, please, in your wrap-up, uh, address that particular point? Martin, I've lived here my whole life. I was born and raised on a farm in, in uh, Navarre and Bethlehem Township. I've been a businessman, a small businessman. I've been an elected official. I've worked in the medical field for the last six years. Uh, I've noted the county inside and out, and I know what's, what is facing us and maybe some of the issues that are facing us. I want to touch on the one point that Bill made about of all these people coming in from out of state that are doing on, on the oil and, and the gas work. That is currently why they train people for the, in, for the jobs that are here. One of the greatest things I saw was the local trade unions and the local chamber of commerce have gotten together to form the Star County Oil and Gas Partnership to work together to train the workers. You talk to Barry Evans and you talk to the guys from the trade unions, they'll tell you they're, they're going to have their people are going to be taking those jobs because that's they're the ones that have the skills. You talk to the people over in Youngstown that are training people to have those skills. So those jobs are coming because you talk to a fellow that's on a rig from Louisiana. Jimmy says, I want to go back to Louisiana. I need to train somebody here to do the jobs. I need to train the guys to weld the pipe. And that's happening. That local fellow from Central Catholic who's right. now, now, be, now is a welder. He's out. Look at what Stark State's doing. Stark State has started up a, a great program. And if you want to see something that I think would be very enlightening to you, I'm chairman of the uh, Business and Education Advisory Council for the Madison Chamber, and we're having a meeting out at Stark State, and Stark State's our host, and they're going to have uh, Rhonda Rita, who's from the Ohio Oil and Gas, and the Stark State folks, because they're putting together programming to, to train these kids. And, and you're, as commissioner, going to be monitoring... Uh, the local factor, absolutely sure these jobs promoting the local factor, and absolutely. they want these jobs to be start. Absolutely, jobs. and they will be. Okay. If you right now, if you can, and the biggest challenge they have, Martin, is passing the drug test. But if you can pass the drug test and have a CDL, you can you can basically name name where, where you want to work and when you want to work. I mean, it, it's 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 out there. The opportunity okay. is out there. Okay, you want to go ahead and uh, on the issue. Here. We have enough full time politicians. I am going to keep and work with Mercy. I will. I know the job as a county commissioner. I will not miss any meetings. I know what what it entails to do the job, but I don't think that by saying, "Well, I'm going to be a full time county commissioner," part of the county commissioner's role is to be out in the field. That's part of the role I do in my job now. And and I don't. What you know? What a part of the problem is when you get full time county commissioners, they are full time government um, elected officials. They work to keep their jobs because they know they're only as good as their next election. I'm going to keep my job. My, my employer has been very good to me, and, and he gave me an opportunity. I enjoy what I'm doing there. And I think Friday was a perfect example. I was out at Chesapeake's working with the local employer groups that are out there in my role. But that's when I saw some of the issues that they're having with wetlands and government and, and things like that. So I think I can mold them in together. And, and you know, if you want to... Um, I just think we have enough full-time okay. politicians. Uh, and then just, just to wrap up, what uniquely about Richard Regula should attract Stark County voters? 
Well, I, I think I, I, I understand the agricultural community very well. I understand the business community very well in my roles in various chambers. I understand the, 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 what's on the horizon with the oil and gas business. And I think I can bring a lot of things to the table that uh, makes me uniquely qualified.